I left in 1960 from South Africa. I was going to school in London at the London Guildhall's School of Music. And then Miriam and Kev had all been already here, yeah, you know, and we grew up together, we've been very close, and she said, hey, this is the place to be, why don't you come to New York, and I'll talk to Harry Belafonte, and we'll try and get you into a music school. And that's how I came here. Things kept escalating in South Africa and at home. I mean, I had planned to go back in 1963, but by the time I w I'd wanted to go back, I'd finished at Manhattan School of Music. Everybody just said I was crazy, you know, and Harry pulled me aside and said, man, nobody knows you. You've been hanging out with us and you've been saying all these things and you know, you're such a firebrand when you talk about South Africa. You're not known, so when you go back there, they'll just consume you and nobody will even know that you've disappeared. But if you, live, if you stay here and try and make a name for yourself and then talk about your country, people will listen. And I went with that. But some of us, I mean, we're so like glued to South Africa that we're only here physically, in our spirits were still there. Like Miriam Makeba and her daughter, Bongi, were very happy to see me when I arrived because they had grown up singing traditional healing songs every day because her mother was a traditional healer, so was a grandmother and a great-grandmother. And they had this anthology of traditional songs that were just unbelievable, but like they had um, those um, uh, um, meditation, uh, meditational ceremony almost every night at home. To a great extent, many of those songs is what like uh, helped us to survive when we're here overseas. We'd get together and sing them and all that. <laughs> 